You're listening to the Life of Lozo podcast. We are live here at Life of Lozo. He is the funniest, smartest, sexiest guy I know. <laughs> Lozo is now live. Yo, on this episode, DJ Freefall comes to Studio O and we discuss our upcoming event on July 1st at the Eye Lounge here in Orlando. We talk about our love for hip hop and passion for bringing something dope and new to the city. So come out and support y'all. Thank you to our sponsors, Stay Tuned Studios, The Taylor Shop Inc., Zero 3 Productions, H. Charles Photos, Slip Beaver K, and Rhyme Designs Clothing, Rhymes for Guitars, The Music Experience, Custom Trips, and More, The Art of Kyle Willis, and of course, Jack Nutrition. Let's go. Yo, 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 Life of Lozo Podcast. We are live here at Studio O, SDS Podcast, the Dub G's Winter Garden. Special guest in the room, DJ Freefall. What's up, bro? What's up, buddy? What's going on? <laughs> chilling, man. Chilling. Welcome. Welcome to the lab, bro. Thank to, you for having me. Yeah, SDS awesome. Podcast. What do you think, man? What do you it's think? It's really dope. Yeah? Super dope. Yes, sir. <laughs> What's the first thing you see on the wall that, that you got interested in? I mean, uh, it's everything. It's, uh, <laughs> It's well put together. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Very clean. <laughs> uh, very OCD, but I like it. It's yeah, my yeah, style. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, right. sir. I, I think it's a part of like DJing. Like you kind of have to just have your program, how shit works for you. Oh, yeah, and, no, like, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my studio is the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it's funny because it's like I, I'm going to get into like the, uh, the interior design game for like hip hop hits. That's what I've decided to do. <laughs> do it that'd be kind of dope I'm gonna, I'm gonna do I'm gonna like flip houses and like turn it into like regular house into like 90s hip hop era house let's do it <laughs> uh, maybe be like a concept like a kiosk that we get yeah. set up uh, for the party exactly like over there like get, get your house renovated 90s hip hop flavor exactly we'll do, we'll do it all right we'll do it all uh-huh. hell yeah man we'll do well welcome to the show number one uh, uh, number two obviously we've been we've been hanging out for a little while now yeah, kind of catching up talking music and whatnot but we got something going on July 1st so I want to get right into it man Let's let's talk about this event we got going down. Oh man, it's a uh, it's a concept I've always wanted to do for a long time, man. Mm-hmm. It's uh it's something that's really hard uh, to put together, uh, not in theory but in actual like application. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what it is is essentially just an old school hip hop event, yeah. Not a party and somewhere where people can just go to and listen to. Seventies, uh, eighties, nineties, uh, golden era music, yeah. funk, uh, you know. Like Jazzy Jeff, like uh, Quest Love type vibe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, without party rocking, without that vibe, without that like turn up. Because yeah. I feel like a lot of places do, they start with uh, the idea, the concept of doing that, mm-hmm. but then it, it always becomes like this party thing. Yeah. And yeah. it doesn't end up just kind of like essentially being that right. and just that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember when, when we talked about it, we did the the live show over at your place. When yeah, we did kind of the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. top ten MC thing, yeah, yeah, Ray yeah. Love and A Styles and all that. And we kind of were talking about it, and that was the idea. It was like, you know what? Let's do something chill. You know what I'm saying? Like, this, like everybody's doing parties, everybody's doing nightclubs, everybody's doing like, you know, lit the hits, like get crazy, drink, go nuts. Um, but but something that's missing really is just kind of that that chill vibe. Like, come out whether you want to like. You know, just just kind of have a drink and chill with some friends. Whether you want to smoke a hookah, like wh- I, whatever you want to do, but just like chill, right? Listen to dope ass music yeah. and chill. Or like, uh, if there's other, hopefully, you know, again, we'll we'll have to uh, the way that we express to the people uh, what we're trying to build is to build with like minded individuals uh at the same spot as well yeah you know like we're if you want to come and turn up and listen to five hours of party up it's not gonna happen <laughs> right right, don't right come. exactly listen yeah. i would love to have you there yeah yeah uh but i don't think ideally that it would be a, the place for you yeah yeah if you want to you know if you got homies from out of town or if you're just a grown adult like mm-hmm. myself that yep. grew up in that era of music and you yeah. turn on the radio and you're like what the fuck is this bullshit yeah <laughs> i wish i could go somewhere on a sunday with my lady and yep. chill right uh and this is it man like yeah, this yeah. is this is it yeah and it's not a party it's it's a it's a it's a it's a golden era concept yeah yeah and it's aimed that like i i will stress to beat over everyone's head <laughs> that it's not a party right uh, and it's a vibe, and yeah. if you want to experience that vibe, yeah. we'd love to have you. Yeah, yeah. And I think the cool part too is like, you know, we've got. I know I talked to Vic from like Dope Sophisticated Podcast. I know I'm, I'm, 
I'm still trying to shake down uh, Gimparella from Locally Fresh, right? Yeah. So, like, inviting some of those people that are also kind of in that same lane of, like, let's do something for the city. Let's do something cool and different. Let's bring some people out. But they're they're fans of the culture. They're fans of hip-hop. They're fans of, like, that idea of kind of community and chill. Uh, but also, like, I, you know, I reached out to my boy Kyle, who's done a lot of the artwork in this room, um, and I think I'm going to reach out to uh, Jessie Marie. She's another artist here in yeah, Orlando. Nice. And I've been trying to track her down because she does some really dope, like, Wu-Tang type stuff. Yeah. Um, but, I, I like, the idea is that we want to have some, like, some art there, right? Like, like have some cool-ass shit. So, like, like have maybe some prints done, some original stuff done, have some giveaways, you know, maybe do some some hip-hop trivia. But just, like, the things that will align with the vibe, will align with the music, uh, but will also bring something that's kind of new and different. Cause like, like a, it'll you know, be like an afternoon of bingo minus the bingo. It'll exactly, be like a, right? Like an afternoon yeah. of hip-hop. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's essentially just have a, like, a lot of us old people there that right. like to reminisce on good music, <laughs> good vibes, good energy, Yep. Uh, and just build on that, hopefully. I mean, the aim is, again... Uh, we may, you know, the venue is small to medium sized venue, so mm -hmm. it probably fit about 150 people. But if we yeah. could limit that number to 100 people and just keep it really intimate, where yeah. it's like, hey, this yeah. is what we're doing. Yep. And yep. we want to make it intimate so that everyone that's in here is enjoying the vibe and it's not like crowded. And again, it's essentially going away from everything that makes you want to go out to a club but then yeah. takes you away from not going like oh i don't want to pay for parking there's no parking <laughs> right, right right i mean like yeah we don't there's valet if you want a valley and it's complimentary yep. and then there's plenty of parking and it's free you don't have yep. to pay uh it's a ten dollar cover but yep. that's gonna literally pay for all the hustle and bustle <laughs> that we got <laughs> exactly coming to put together yep. uh this event and hopefully uh I mean, yeah. Yeah. I, I like the fact that it's a small venue, too. I know we got a chance. Like, yeah, I know you've, yeah. done, you've done a lot of stuff at Eye Lounge. That's my first time kind of seeing it in person. But I, what's dope about that is it becomes exclusive, right? Yeah, like, no, like at the end of the day, you can only fit so many people in there. And so, like, those that will be there, I think, are going to have a fantastic time and, and and really be able to hear some some dope-ass yeah. music in a cool-ass way with some cool-ass stuff. But it's, it's not for everybody. And looking at the time, right? So it's July 1st from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. Correct. Right? So so it's it's the afternoon, right? It's chill. Yes, it's no. like it's not party hours. No. It's not crazy. No. It's like you wake yeah. up in the morning uh, and you, like, with the wife and kids and uh, – you know, it is actually, uh, kids can come. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you want your kids listening to Wu-Tang all afternoon. <laughs> uh, it is all clean edits because yeah. it's ex it's open air, so the outside is exposed. Right. But you get a, an amazing view of the Orlando Eye that's right there, the yep. golf greens. Uh, and yeah, you wake up and you're like, hey, man, let's, let's do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Well, I want to go to brunch, or I want to go here. Well, yeah. let's let's you know. Uh, the good thing about the venue is that it's connected to the Cafe Thirty Four yeah. restaurant, uh, and they said that they would be serving like uh, brunch type. Yep. Uh, it's like hors d'oeuvres and food. hot dogs and hamburgers and stuff like that. So yeah. food will be uh, available yeah, yeah. as well too. So yeah. it's just like it's everything. Chill, man. It's everything, man. It's chill. Yeah. It's everything. It's, it's a culture. Yeah. It's you know, the other thing I forgot to mention, and uh, I'm not really sure if we can lock this down for this week, but mm. Uh, that grassy area, uh, we can be permitted to use that area as well. Oh, wow. So that we could uh, essentially maybe set up speakers out there and let the yeah. B-Boys dance out there. See, that would be sick. Dude. I think if we yeah. well, we may be able to lock yeah. that down before this week. Yeah, well, because the other thing, when I, when I talked to Kyle about doing some artwork for it, um, he was like, yo, maybe I'll come down and like do live artwork. Yeah. He's like, because if, if, you you know, if you got four hours for me, six hours for me, like I can literally paint something, draw something, so, do something live. While people let are me there let me let me let me secure that we actually <laughs> yeah. may be able to okay unless okay. somebody else is doing something that day uh, yeah. all the vendors have like a, yeah. a, a availability to that area it's a shared yeah. space yeah so if there's dope. nothing else going on we, we be may be out. able to have that yeah. whole middle area to ourselves that'd be sick and it, look and it, look if, if we can dope if and we then, can't then we right. can shoot for next time right you know what I mean right correct yeah that'd be super cool man. Cool. Well, I'm excited for it, man. So, like I said, June for, or July 1st. Yep. So, uh, literally a, a week and one day yeah. from when this podcast drops off. Um, at the Eye Lounge by the Orlando Eye, 2 p.m. to 8 p.m., $10 cover charge. Um, mm -hmm. All ages. There'll be food there. There'll be drinks there. If you want to just come and hang out, listen to adult music, we're going to do some some trivia. We'll have some podcasters there. We'll have some art there. Uh, but I think it's going to be a super dope-ass time, man. Oh, yeah. I'm super excited for it. So, uh, so yeah. So, so I know we, we've talked a little bit about kind of like – 
you know, uh, your history yeah. and music and <laughs> DJing and all that type of stuff. So like, I, you know, I know, I know how I got into music at an early age and got into vinyl at an early age and, you know, was listening to music and break dancing at school and listening to rock and roll at home and all that stuff. But I'd love to kind of like just, you know, what got you into music to begin with and then getting into yeah. music, what got you into DJing? You know, it's funny. Uh, and I, I feel like I say this a lot, but I got into music because I used to go out to clubs and I used to hate what other DJs were playing. Yeah, I used to I used to get angry when DJs would play like uh, like Troy, for example. They would play the horn power Troy and then yeah. run right out of it and uh, go to another song. Yeah, like, what yeah. the fuck? <laughs> um, but then you realize that it's not because they're doing it because uh, they don't care for the record. It's just right. like the attention span of people yeah. overall is skewed and is fucked up, so yeah. that they have to. So hence. This party, right, right. This is like a whole conceptual thing that's been developing for twenty years. Like, yeah. yeah, the aim is to like take that element away out of people mm -hmm. w before they get there. Yeah, uh, I know. So yeah, like the first record I ever played at a nightclub was like, uh, uh, it was Gangstar Loyalty, mm. yeah, and it yeah, didn't yeah. go well. Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it, was, it was like a, it was like a, it was like yeah. a, like two, 1998, 97, and it was like you know. Yeah playing whatever the fuck they were at that time yeah. probably the fujis or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah and i was like yeah, yeah. no i'm gonna drop loyalty to because this is real hip-hop yeah and niggas gonna be like yo yeah. this is dope <laughs> yeah but yeah. then they weren't yeah yeah yeah. And because you know it's yeah it's not for everybody right 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 right, right. and it's just yeah. one of those things that you can't in, in, imply that love of hip-hop especially artists uh and people to that extent yeah on everybody because it's not a commercial thing right 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 it's just kind of like you have to grow up wanting it yep yeah well it's funny because we were talking about that like you know because because yeah growing up in kind of that hip-hop era and then like getting into music and then like getting into dj because i got into dj in like my freshman year of college my boy ray dj tanga ray at western michigan had his gemini belt driven turntables in his dorm room and i was like yeah. that shit is ill <laughs> like i want to learn um and but doing nightclubs and like getting into the game i remember that like that was like you number one you had to carry vinyl in right yeah, for the other absolutely. djs sure. number two you had to get there at like 8 30 at night yeah you know the the doors open at nine but when nobody be in the club till 10 30 oh, no, 11 no, right so like that that was when we actually had a chance to go out there and actually play real hip-hop because there was nobody in the club anyway right right no, <laughs> but, yeah but once the crowd showed up yeah man like at, at, at that time in michigan you know you were going from playing you know, uh, you know, Camp Low to then like, you know, New York and Biggie and Tupac and all that shit. Right. Um, to then like we were playing JIT music and Detroit booty techno and nice. ghetto techno oh, and yeah. Chicago, you know, um, all that stuff we were playing um, it, it, for for the entire night. But like I say, you know, if you want to get your hip hop fix, you had to get that shit on before 10 p.m. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, that's funny. You know, I think uh, we ended up taking a lot of like weird gigs. Uh, and like it was me, uh, DJ Point Blank, and DJ Infrared, mm -hmm. uh, and DJ Verse, and Kasimi. We ended up taking a lot of like, dude, I DJed weird places, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I DJed TGA Fridays, like, like before TGI Fridays had DJs. Like, this is like 97, 98. Yeah. Because uh, it was just like, hey, this is a place that's willing to let us play. Mm -hmm. And we would drop some gangster ass shit there. And it's yeah. just like, yeah. yeah, this is probably not a deal for TGI Fridays or yeah. anywhere. Right. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, it was just, uh, it was an outlet. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because even with, uh, I'm not a fan of mumble rap, but mm -hmm. like looking at, uh, like hip hop and the evolution of hip hop, uh, you know, the kids wanted something different and they didn't want disco mm -hmm. uh, and they wanted hip hop. And if you watch, what was that a hip hop show on Netflix or whatever? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, shit. I, whatever. I, I, whatever. The point is that the it, it gave yeah. them an outlet. Yeah. And then the people that were there were like, yo, but you don't understand. Like, so it's kind of weird because we look at 90s hip hop now probably yeah. the same way the disco people looked at their music. Yeah. And the young generation just wants an outlet. Right. Uh, and it's like, hey, like, it's cool. Yeah. But we want this shit. Right. We don't want that shit. Right, right. Uh, and even though we think that the new <laughs> shit is shit, and we yeah. know that it is, yeah. it's still their outlet. And it's it's just weird how yeah. things you know just come uh, full circle like that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I just you know it's it's different nowadays, DJing. Yeah. Uh, it's a it's a good thing. 
Yeah. I, I'm trying to be a little more selective now uh, overall with where I play mm -hmm. in terms of I'd rather uh, play what I want yeah. and have a good time doing it versus getting paid and yeah. paying the bills and being wealthy. Right, right, right. This has given me more, a lot more happiness to be able to just have freedom and do what I want. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, you find the joy in that, right? It's, I mean, it's I've, like, been, yeah. I've been DJing yeah. full time now, like 15, 20 years. Like, <laughs> yeah. I gave up my million dollar sales territory when I was yeah. like 22. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. it's been a, a really good run, and it's still a really good run. Yeah. But I just, again, it's more, I feel yeah. like it's come down to the point where I, quality the quality of the crowd yeah. and the people that listen to your music uh really inspire you to go the next level mm -hmm. uh and if you have that quality there even if it's a hundred quality people you'll put yeah. on the best performance because those hundred people will appreciate that like there's no tomorrow yep absolutely and at the end of the day that's all that matters to me now yeah i mean i feel like that's as real as it can get like yeah. everyone's like oh man keep it real like no that's <laughs> like legitimately like <laughs> Yeah, that's like planting a seed in your hand, watching it grow, and it's yeah. like you're holding it. Like exactly, it's crazy, but yeah, see where it goes. And that's true. Like I think when when you can be genuine and authentic, and and especially when you're in a place like when you're like I remember back when I was in college, and you know we do the the nightclubs, and you know we it was funny we had like multiple outlets. We'd go and do the radio show on college radio, and it was called like the Player Hated Eight. Yeah, and we wouldn't play anything commercial. It yeah, was all nice. underground shit. That's it was awesome. all hip hop, and we would trash, you know, all the commercial shit. Yeah, yeah, and have yeah. a good time. And then we would go to one club on a Tuesday night, and it was kind of like, you know, like an urban club. It was, it was, you know, kind of like it was hip hop, but it wasn't like the over the top commercial shit. Yeah. And then on Friday night, we'd be at the warehouse, and that was like the turn up spot, and it was right. all the commercial radio shit. So like, we had all these different outlets on you know, playing all the music that was out there in different ways for different audiences. Uh, but where we where we always had the most fun was in that place where people not only enjoyed the music, but they enjoyed the way as a DJ you would put shit together. Right. Uh, there was this club in Battle Creek called Brothers, which was like in the hood. Yeah, yeah. And it was uh, 25 and up. So like most of the clubs we were doing – were either you know eighteen and up and twenty one and up, but this one was twenty five and up. So it was like you know this is ninety, shit ninety eight ninety nine yeah, yeah. twenty five and up. So like you know they, it was like dressed to impress. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like it was it was it was a spot, but it was the middle of the hood. What was dope about it though, when I would go and in and DJ with uh, with Bodega Brad and White Shadow, we go out there and do it, was that like you could play the original P Funk song. Right. And then go into the Dre song. Right. You could play right. people like, will fuck with it. Right. And they would go out and they would dance with that shit, the original shit. And then you could go into the into the hip hop version. Well, and and a couple of twenty five to twenty eight year olds would go out there and dance to that shit. But like it was a dope ass vibe. Wow, that's all yeah. they care about, man. Right. It's vibe. Yeah, yeah. That's literally like that's just like those are the the four letters that flash in my mind now when I play anywhere. It's vibe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I don't care about turn up. I don't care about right. none of that other shit. Right. Yeah. Like For I, the most part. Right. I mean, there's times obviously like you know like because I play a lot of house music and, and yeah. remix a lot of stuff. Like for that, I definitely want like ambience and like mm -hmm. really crazy vibe. But yeah, yeah, that's sick. So so I I got my top five MCs over there as artwork on the wall. Oh man. Right. So I gotta ask you. Yeah. You can't come on the show and, and not yeah, tell yeah, me for sure. your top five Man. FCs. You're kind of putting me in a spot here. Uh, you know what? Well, I'm gonna tell you honestly, like, and it's not in any particular order, but just mm -hmm. like artists I've been listening to a lot historically, and not me, not even just now, but just historically. Yeah. Uh, like the Roots, mm -hmm. Black Dog. Okay. Uh, definitely Nas. Yep. Uh, definitely like. Jay Z, Reasonable Doubt era. Yeah. Uh, I mean anything from the the golden era for sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, Outkast definitely. Yeah. You know, for sure. Uh, definitely Tupac for sure. Yeah. I mean, I had it's more than five. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to ask a DJ <laughs> five. It's like, yeah, no, that's like a definitely not gonna. Happen. I know, right? Yeah. Uh, it sucks. It's the worst question ever, but we always. You have know, to ask like. It. I, I, yeah. <laughs> uh bcc not even they weren't even lyrically that great but they just i mean like i i, I fuck with them hard yeah. like hard yeah i mean man i duck down all day yeah, dude. duck down man that was it was so funny when yeah, you said that man. the other day when i was uh when i was bumping I'm this down shit, even when i'm by, by myself. myself yeah, yeah. man <laughs> for sure can't clip even when i'm by dude. myself you know th yeah. those are the you know and that's kind of like uh 
I want to play shit like that. Yeah, exactly. And, and I want to play Bucktown yeah, right. and let that shit ride like from the beginning yes, to the end and the just have song. people sing the whole goddamn yeah. song. And yep, it's like, yep. <laughs> that's what I inspired to do. And putting yeah. that and playing that and seeing people smile at will make me smile, mm-hmm. make my soul happy. Yep. Uh, I don't know, it'll make your soul I'm happy. Fun. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, Dude, if the, I can, end, yeah. the end result, like, re- really is we're. I mean, I'm putting a lot of effort. You are as well. Mm-hmm. Creative effort. We are, because uh, we legitimately want to give you the best experience when you go there. Yeah. And it sounds like a sales pitch, but it's not. Right. Like I'm like like, like I want it to be like everyone that walks in is like me sitting down, mm-hmm. listening to this person play, and right. there it's just a, the expectation is going to be set so high. Mm-hmm. Even though it's not going to be only music, though. Yeah, yeah. So it's not going to be a thing where, like, it, you know, we're only yeah. doing uh, music and it's nothing else. It's going to be, you know, hopefully dialogue. Yeah, absolutely. Interactive dialogue. Interactiveness. Experience. We have some uh, podcasters yeah, yeah. there talking to people, yeah, yeah. you know. For sure. Yeah, because right. I, I, well, I think it's, it's one of those things where when you can go and experience somebody who has the same passion and understanding and, um, you know, has, has like... It's it's kind of like, if, like if I put it in perspective, like I would rather go and see Prince, like when he was alive. I'd rather go see him play with like a a, a dope ass band and then right. just like riff right. and do what he wants to do in a small room, right? In a small versus room versus seeing him front row at Madison right. Square Garden playing his songs, right? Right, of e- exactly because it's like because it's authentic, right? It's authentic. You get a chance to see somebody who's a musician do shit and feel shit and and choose to do things that comes from him in the moment versus like this programmed, I wrote this song, I got to right. perform the song. Right. So like that to me is what this event is about. And it's probably because having been, you know, a DJ too and say like, I, I get that, right? Because I, I want to hear, like, when you start talking about Buck, like, well, uh, wait, what? Like, you're gonna, you see, I know I, you're gonna drop a set too, though, right? I might, yeah, I might throw a little something uh, together, right? To. I might have to, right? You but, put me on the spot for but, the MCs, man. You're gonna have to drop a set. <laughs> but, like, I feel like, like, like Lost Boys. Oh, yeah, all like, day. Man. You said, like, when was the last day. time you heard a Lost Shit, Boys man, song, I still right? I play Lost Boys all yeah, day. Yeah, man. man. You know, like, so, like, that, that to me is, is the shit where it's like, there's so much well, good music. Yeah, the other thing I wanted to touch on, uh, yeah. so that it, just for the records that we're not like I'm definitely not and I know you're not against like uh playing like like regular nineties hip hop. Oh no, yeah, absolutely. Because it's not gonna be like an MF Doom marathon for no. six hours. No, 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 no. It's right, not gonna right. be like that. But uh I just like we're just asking yeah. people to be a little more open minded. That's yeah. it. Yeah, well yeah, because if, if yeah, if you could come in and in, in if you if you're from that era, you'll recognize things like Jurassic Five, like you know, like like, they're like you know like there are songs and groups and and things that you haven't heard in a while. Of course, then there's the more popular ones that 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 got really big and huge right. and things so like that. But it's gonna be it's gonna be a mix of everything. I mean, yeah. it will be. As a matter of fact, I mean, I have like my iTunes. I can go through some of like my golden era stuff that I have here, and it's just yeah. all like. But I mean, it's gonna be everything. Yeah. It's not gonna be one of. Too much of one thing and right. too much of and you know too little of anything else. Yeah, and and I loved I love the fact that like you know playing some seventies and eighties shit because so much of that decade those two Dude, decades that's a lot. I got like I got some funk that I want to yeah. talk to man. Well, they influenced all that, that shit in the nineties, right? A lot of the stuff became it was samples that was. I may even drop my Super Mario remix at that. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, that'll be dope, man. That'd be super dope. So, so if you could, if if, if you could only listen to one album, oh, right, Jeez. for like if you were locked in a room for forty eight hours, forty eight hours, yep, forty eight hours. You have forty eight hours. You can only listen to one album. What's you know, this album? album is actually not bad. The score, the score, of the, the Fugees, right here. Like that? You can listen yeah. to this forty eight uh-huh. hours. I pulled that out the other day. I was talking to somebody about it and had to show them my limited edition repress. I was gonna say this yeah. isn't uh, like an original, is it? No, I wish, but it it it's, it's like uh, you bought this at like uh, Urban Outfitters. Yeah, right. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like fifty dollars. Yep. Yeah, I'm on a, I'm on the vinyl club. That's what all those brown boxes yeah. are. So nice. I get a record. I get a record per month. Um, For real? But, like old school? Oh, yeah. That's so dope. What, what's dope is it's a mix. They give you new school shit stuff I've never heard of. That's cool. Uh, That's but then they cool. do like they do limited pressings on classic albums. So like I got the Fujis. I got ready to die up there on the wall. Nice. You know what I'm saying? It's a repressed limited you gotta, edition. My boy got me the so. Met the Man, the, uh, All That I Need. Like, oh, signed by yeah. Met the Man. Oh, shit. That's dope. It's funny. We ran into Met the Man at Walmart. He sent me like a long yeah. time ago. 1997. Yeah. Super random. 
he's getting tatted by my boy who passed rob g yeah. who ended up tatting me as well so yeah. super weird but yeah what's it's what's going to be crazy about sunday is that method man has been rocking this new gear by my boy in la called penpoint gear oh yeah and that's like i say that yeah, picture yeah, yeah, yeah. of method okay. right that's what that box of stuff is right there so we're gonna be giving away some penpoint nice. shirts and that's tees dope. and hoodies right and he's, he's rocking that shit uh, Chino excels about to rock that shit. That's dope. So yeah, man, it's gonna be it's gonna be kind of crazy, man. It's gonna be a good time on Sunday. So like, I mean, <laughs> like, uh, can I give you some examples of like, you yeah. know, just like, let's do it. I mean, run me down. Uh, so this is like all over the place, right? I mean, yeah, I'm gonna start off with the weirdest shit too. Like another one bites the dust, the Queen. Mm -hmm. Why okay. not? Yep. Like notorious thugs. Uh, like mm -hmm. it was a good day. Ice Cube, yeah. like Lucini, like Jay Z <laughs> feeling it. <laughs> Feel like it. dear mama like love peace and nappiness or mm. the slick rick uh join i can't it's like uh hey young world yeah, hey like young that world. like yeah. that type of vibe yeah yeah like that type of vibe i mean like it just well, you have to do like a little west coast you have, like, oh a little dude, I, I mean i got and, dude so yeah, <laughs> one thing i've been as a dj this is not even related to the party but i've been organizing all my uh i've been adding on the grouping so if you're a DJ and uh, I'm about to give you a, a like the <laughs> a secret gem, to huh? life, a like gem. legit the secret to life. So notate this right now and you can thank me later. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram at DJ Freefall. <laughs> yep. <laughs> when you go on iTunes uh, and you're grouping, you come up with certain code words for your uh, anything and create mm. smart playlists. Mm. So I create smart playlists and I have like 90s hip-hop as the genre mm -hmm. and then i have keywords for the artist uh if it's clean if it's like if i consider it like a new york hip-hop or west coast yep. or so i have it's like subcategory 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 but mm. since it's in the i write it in the grouping yeah. section so that's yep. usually like left uh, empty and as long as you put a space you can create uh intelligent playlists that just wind yeah. everything down automatically so when you load it up it's only 90s west coast clean hip-hop so it's like meta tags it's like meta tags that yeah. you add so right. it automatically puts everything there for you without yeah. you actually physically yeah. having to do it in serato yes. so it's, when you add like let's say today let me look at something real quick like 90s hip-hop mm -hmm. so the last song i added was uh back in the day mm, somebody in. requested i was yeah. like i got this yeah let me play I'm like oh shit i don't have it like damn uh. so i downloaded it on the uh in may uh -huh. and on the grouping it's it's a clean version so it's clean uh west coast hip-hop mm -hmm. uh and 90s hip-hop is uh the genre so when you search in Serato, yep. it, because you have it meta tagged, everything just comes up and it's literally so much easier to find like what you need. Mm. So like if I wanted to do like five dog songs, yeah. like every song that has five, some I just like without like I mean obviously like it's gonna have the five original records that like sure. are like tagged in the artist category. Yeah, but yeah. what if like five did a verse on somebody's song and you didn't have it like that's right. in that grouping and that's added so when I'm able to like scan for it man that's crazy you're not finding a lot i mean it's helping a lot like a lot a lot that's super dope man because yeah you you, you step, mentioned step into a world krs i mean that's not even like that's kind of like you know that was like it's funny when yeah. that song came out because we were like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 it was kind of like it wasn't a krs right, for us right. even it, it, it no rock him was uh oh, man <laughs> god damn it <laughs> we're going down the rabbit hole yeah you know so oh man I, I was I didn't like guess who's back. Mm -hmm. I felt like it was like it was like really, it was like a little forced. Yeah. Yeah. A lot, it was a lot forced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot forced, man. Yeah. I mean, like you yeah. know, we expected you know mm -hmm. '90s rock him and yeah. uh, like early '90s, and it, it wasn't yeah. quite out to be that way. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> my personal opinion but you know <laughs> won't discredit him from his previous work right, it's right, just right. you know yeah yeah if you go some, on... some people release music and it's like after the fact it's just like uh no yeah well if, if you're going Ahmed back in the day then you gotta be thinking about Skilo I wish oh yeah you know what I'm saying you gotta be thinking about some Coolio I mean like for like <laughs> 90s West Coast like the stuff I really like is like uh man uh I'm just going through like some of the categories here that have just sorting shit, man. Mm -hmm. Um I like Pac a lot, man. Yep. 
Uh, I like Ice Cube. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I even got like. F- well, what's that? What's that connection? Bone Dogs. I got five on it. Yeah, Loomis. Uh, yeah, yeah. Exhibit. People sleep on yeah, Exhibit. Dude. Paparazzi. Like, yeah, that's what yeah. I was playing right now. Hold on. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, like, I think of, like, records like this, too, like, on, yeah. like, Tupac's album that don't get a lot of shine, but that are really dope. Like, uh, uh-huh. I got my mind made up with uh, Med Man, uh, Red Man and Met the Man. Yeah. Like, so they're not, like, listed on this song at all. Right, uh, right. And I think Corrupt's on here, too. So, yeah. like, they're listed on the... um on that grouping on yeah, the yeah, meta yeah. tag and I can yeah. find it a lot faster. J O Felony and Yeah, uh, dude, of yeah, course. See? Come on, man. And then uh I can give it to you but what you gonna do with it? Yeah, what, man. What, 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 you what? know what? Um I'm trying to uh <laughs> this I always remember the the original but I can't remember the 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 pop record. Um it's uh I think it's your. It's not dear mom. It's one one of those like type of pop records that mm-hmm. I wish I got to play more. Or ooh child. Yeah. yeah. Ooh and I child. see like I want to play like. Uh, see like this is how I would b- bring it in like yeah. there. I would play like the original sample. Yeah. And then go into the records. So, I mean, it's not even yeah. like this is like rocket science. It's not like nobody yeah. else is doing this no, shit. No, no, Everybody right. and their mom is doing this shit everywhere else in every other right. city and market. Why aren't we doing it here in Orlando? Exactly. I'm mean, like, I'm yeah. not even trying to sound like I'm like doing no. something that's well, that, it's not innovative. Right? No, You're not right. at all. It's just bringing. I just this wanted vibe. to do this. Yeah. I've been wanting to yeah. do this, and there's no outlet <laughs> for it. Uh, you know. Yeah. But then in the same token, I would maybe even drop some weird Kanye from like like spaceship like yes. stuff like this. It's like. Because yes. that, yes, vibe, yeah, it's a vibe, man. Yeah, man. It's a vibe. Oh, I love it, dude. It's gonna be so dope. I'm so excited. Hey, look, if it's just if it's just you and me, right? <laughs> no. So the best shows that I've done uh, yeah, when I yeah. broadcast is when yeah. I have like real hip hop heads. Yeah. Uh, that I uh, I had Ray Love, I had DJ mm-hmm. Kurt Rez from New York, mm-hmm. and I had A Styles, and that was one of the best times I had. Yeah. In life. General, yeah, so yeah, I keep yeah. walking away from the mic. Oh, no, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's really good. It's it was, the the fun part about doing uh, the live show with with Ray Love and A Styles, man, was like you know we started off kind of playing some records, then we got into it, then we started talking about these artists and like uh, why they were ranked, and then we started having a good ass no, time. We can, oh, yeah, we had a good yeah. ass time. I still listen to that. If I uh, those mega mixes was if crazy. I was still drinking, it'd yeah. probably be like a lot more fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be a lot more fun yeah. for sure, but <laughs> well, we can debate hip hop all day, though. All day, right? All day, man. So like, I, I'm down yeah. for that, man. I gotta come back here and, and do this. Oh yeah, we'll go down the rabbit hole. Oh, we, well, here's what we'll like, do. I'll just come in pajamas yeah. and just like yeah. early in the morning, yeah, exactly. super like <laughs> we'll, do, we'll do an overnight. <laughs> yeah, for real. I'll have a sleepover. Like yeah. tell my wife, like, hey, I'm gonna have a sleepover at Lozo's house. All right, I'll see you later, guys. <laughs> yep. What are you guys gonna do? We're gonna sit in the podcast. We're just gonna talk just shit talk all shit night, all night. The funny part is, so so the the see. the book that you have your computer on, that's a history of hip hop yeah, yeah. Bible book. Yeah. But what I want to do one time, and maybe we'll do it with you. Look, look, like, like it costs it, it, like seven hundred dollars. Yeah, it's massive, right? It's yeah, huge. Weighs like a thousand pounds. Yeah, I just want to play a game where we just open to a page, and then we just start talking. Oh, you, like random. Can we do right? it right oh, now? you can do it right now. You can do it right, do it right now. now. Yeah, let's oh, let's yeah. just do one. We'll test oh, it right now. For the moment. Hey, come on, let's do it. Yeah, and and it, and it, it is in order of history, so just know that okay. the, the earlier, the 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 closer the page, the older it's going to be. Uh, but yeah, just just pop on a page and do see. Like two thirds. There you go. What we got? Ziga ziga. <laughs> a bootleg history of the mixtape. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's DJs. Just, it's just about DJs and shit. Uh, how you like hit the E40. DJ era. I thought I was like an artist. <laughs> Will Smith. <laughs> Still relevant. Yep. Right. You can't say anything more than that. No, right? Hey, you can't say true. shit. Uh, there you go. Hey, 100 yeah. hot albums nice. of the 80s. Two Life Crew had the top three. Third base is four. Third base. Basie Boys, License to Ill. Yeah, man. I think you know what time it is. It's time to get ill. That was that was the song. That was the album that I remember like being in my grandma's guest room with a blank cassette tape trying to catch... Book. I was trying to catch like um, uh, Brass Monkey on the radio, yeah, and record it onto a tape so I could take it home. That's funny. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I remember that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Kids yeah. today will never know that struggle. Right. Of like. <laughs> Recording a song off the radio to play it back so they can hear it. Right. <laughs> That's an epic first world problem from right. our generation. Exactly right. <laughs> now they now they got YouTube and Spotify and Apple Bro, Music. It's, just, and it's really sad. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, if DJs were still getting service like uh, they used to historically, I feel like the the game would be a lot different, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just. Uh, iTunes, uh, Spotify, the internet, social yeah. media, uh, it makes things, content, more mm-hmm. available, which is good for the artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it also makes everyone think that they're a DJ or that they're like a uh, music professional mm-hmm. because they have unlimited... I feel like it, it takes away a certain, like, uh, <clears throat> like a certain piece of value from even music when there's, you can't, you don't buy it. Yeah. Like when you don't, you can't go to the record store on Tuesday to go buy yep. the DOS effects tape. Like yeah. you can't do any of that. Like, yeah, it's already there. Yeah, and you, everyone yeah. has it, and then it's free and it's disposable. So it's not like you can hand the tape to somebody and they can like, oh, let me borrow your tape. Let me borrow your killer tape, God. You right. know, like <laughs> I'll buy you four more killer tapes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's no, so true, man. It's, well, anytime you have to invest your own hard in cash into something, you tend that's to. That's why, a like, more I asked you for. earlier. Yeah. I said, "Do you have uh, any copies of your book? Because yeah. I want to buy you." Like, oh yeah, oh, yeah, sure. Like, I got yeah. it in my. I'm like, no, dude. Like, I'm gonna <laughs> like. This is your yeah. you. This is your trade. Like, you put a lot yeah. of blood, sweat, and tears into this. Like. It would yeah. be a slander for me to accept your book for free. <laughs> right. And I would be an asshole of a friend. Like a Napster, right? Yeah, what the fuck, man? <laughs> yeah, man. That's hysterical. Well, so so there's a part of the show that I take, like, songs from the 90s and yep. I convert them into questions. You actually brought up this song earlier. And this this season, it's the Loonies. I got five on it. Yeah. Okay? So I got four questions, um, all with the number five in them. Okay. Okay? So the first question is... If you won five million dollars tomorrow, what's the first thing you buy? Uh, I need more time to answer that. Let's go to number two. I'll come back to it. I promise. I promise. <laughs> Too many things, huh? Um, I mean, no. Uh, shit. Honestly, if I had five million dollars tomorrow, yeah. I'd probably uh, move out of the country. Yeah. And just settle somewhere where uh, I can, where my family and I can just build yeah. and not just be. Just get away from society, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Get away from social media. Get away from the, like, marketing and yeah. selling and commercials and ads and yeah. radio and just yeah. all these things that people kind of take for granted mm-hmm. or just accept as society. You know, yeah. I think it's peace is a golden thing to have, man. Yeah. Uh, and it's great to be able to, uh, if you really, uh, that's a whole other thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's complicated as fuck. It's, well, but yeah, I'd yeah. probably move out. Just get out. It's funny because it reminds me of that that lady, uh, the woman that was like in New York, and she had like a six figure marketing job or whatever, and and she would work all year, and then she would go for like a week or ten days out to like, you know, Bimini or some island somewhere, yeah, yeah. right? And then she would like, she would love it, and she was like, I would work so hard all year to be able to go there, and then she went there one time, and she was like. Well, what if I just lived here? Yeah. Right. So she quit her job. She did that shit, and then she like <clears throat> opened up her own little small business Dude, told, of like I told my surfboard wife, rental. Right. I told my wife yeah. she needs to quit her job. Yeah. And I hope her bosses don't hear this podcast, but <laughs> I feel like she's extremely yeah. talented at what yeah. she does. Um, and I feel like if I okay, so this isn't a question, but yeah. I just actually <laughs> want to throw this out into the universe, and this is for everyone that's listening. Yeah. Uh, I feel like like everyone has a higher like calling in life, mm-hmm. and I feel like don't you shouldn't be complacent with whatever situation you're in unless it's something that you grew up wanting to do your whole life. Yeah. And if you're doing something, even if you're making a lot of money, it's not going to make you happy. Yeah. So if you want to be happy in life, start doing what really legitimately makes you happy more than anything else in the world. Even if it doesn't make you money and you're broke and you're miserable because you can't pay your bills. You're going to be the best at doing whatever you do, and then people are going to seek you out, and you will make the money won't even, it won't even matter. Yeah. None of that even matters anymore. Right. And then people will accept you for what you do, and then eventually, if you like it that much, that energy that you devote into whatever you do, people are going to see that, mm-hmm. and 
they're going to buy into your positivity and your energy, even though you're not even trying to like impose anything on people. Mm-hmm. And, and that m- m- like multiplies exponentially. And yeah. I would recommend for anyone, anyone, yeah. if you're not happy, not even if you're not happy, because no one's really happy. Everyone says they are, but yeah. do what you want to do. Yeah. If it's music, do it. Yeah. If it's art, do it. You want to be a graffiti artist, do it. Just yeah. don't do it in, uh, what is it, Thailand, where they flog you. <laughs> exactly. Don't go there to be a graffiti artist. <laughs> go, to like, go to, go to like yeah. Colonial or Cimarron. Yeah. Right, exactly. You'll be safer yeah. there. Well, no, it's funny because it, it, in the larger theory, right, the whole idea is like you work hard to be able to do the thing that you that you that brings you joy. Yeah. So why not just do the thing that brings you joy? Right. And not have to work as hard. Right. Right. I mean, this is <laughs> common sense, but all right. So okay. what's question two? Sorry. All right, question number two. It's all good. Here I we go. Honestly, won't be that long. No, it's all good. It's why Jesus we, it's why we do this part of the show, man. This is what it makes it happen. All right, question number two is if if you see you thought the first one was deep. Here we go. Uh-oh. Uh If you could have five minutes with anyone, who would it be? Five minutes with anyone. Anyone, dead, dead or alive. Oof. I feel like I had this conversation before. <laughs> yeah, we need to go to question three. I'll be back on that. I get it. It's my uh, my ADD is acting up right now. Yeah. So I'll, we'll, go, we'll go back because I'll, okay. I'll be like mid-sentence on a and question. Go, and I'll go, oh, yeah. yeah it's, oh. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, question number three, what are you doing in five years? Uh, not working. Yeah. <laughs> well, not working, uh, not working a job. Mm-hmm. I, I, I've been, a, I'm going to do what I want mm-hmm. and I'm going to put so much energy into this doing what I want to do, which is more than likely going to be music. Yeah. More than likely under an alter ego, perhaps mm-hmm. <laughs> just to just put stuff out there. Yeah. Uh, because I, I don't really care for the exposure type thing i don't want to be famous yeah. i want my kids to be happy i want my wife to be happy i want to be happy mm-hmm. i don't like i don't want that like diplo superstarness yeah. i mean like i would yeah, yeah. but like it, i don't think it would really make me happy i feel like uh you know it'd be cool to have it like to do a few shows and whatever mm-hmm. and then it just gets like then it's more of a hassle because you can't be a regular person anymore right. and i don't know if i'd be willing to want to give that up like i'd be more content making music selling it for a lot of money and knowing that people enjoy it yep. and not even having to take credit for it. Yep. Yeah, no, it's, it's a, uh, I know a few people that, that, that live that life and uh, they share that it's really difficult. Like you, you think that it's one thing, but it's actually really difficult um, to be, you know, uh, well known and to have all these high expectations. And yeah. like what you find out is that people, while they while they want you involved in something because of who you know and what you've done, they also want you to do it their way. Oh, of course, and because because they're signing big checks, right? <laughs> of and, and that then that takes away a lot of the love and passion of why people do what they want to do. So I I, I totally the, get that the music industry. Yeah. Yep, I totally get or it. Or like any yeah. industry. Any industry. Yeah, yeah, yep. <laughs> any industry. Okay, so uh, last question before we go back to the second yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you could five finger discount anything, what would it be? My an Apple Watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Get back in the game, right? <laughs> I have to wear this yeah. shitty Diamond Movado watch until I get my <laughs> eye watch back. Yeah, this damn watch that only tells time, yeah. right? Like, who the hell would want to wear a watch that only so tells stupid. time? <laughs> All right, we're uh, back to... Question two. Yep, question two. Uh, man. Five minutes with anyone. You know, I want to talk to Tesla, man. Yeah, Elon I- Musk? I, well, Tesla. Oh, actually, like, yeah, actually, Nikolai. Yeah, Nikolai yeah. Tesla, man. Yeah. I feel like I, I would uh, I would tell him to not be discouraged yeah. because he was shit on. Mm. I mean, like he wanted to do so much greatness for the world and he found out just like how you were did, was speaking about earlier, uh, how the industry can be. Mm-hmm. You know, how like uh, Thomas Edison's company bought his company out, like bought all his patents. Yep. Like trashed everything and left him penniless to die in a hotel, mm-hmm. and it's like we could have had these Teslas eighty years ago. Yeah, and people were like, "Yo, we got this electric car. It's this new technology." You're like, "No, we had that shit." Mm-hmm. But like, it's always like bigger interests that protect their money or their yeah. better interests, and, and and don't let shit like that discourage you. Yeah, and I would have told him like, "Yo, like you don't even know the type of effect that you're gonna have <laughs> on the world." Uh, don't yeah. let this discourage you and keep being innovative. Yeah. 
That's dope, man. That's cool. And it's true. Like, that's the, that's the ultimate story of, uh, yeah, just like kind Bro, of. Bro, like, he shitted on yeah. everybody. I mean, like, he's like. <laughs> crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, like, even, like, every, everyone holds Edison to this, like, real, super high, like, standard. Mm -hmm. But Edison was, like, an inventor. Not an inventor. He was just kind of, like, just putting shit together, not really, like, knowing if it worked or not. Yeah. Or Tesla was, like, no. Like, you're telling me this is black, but there's got to be another mm -hmm. way that this, I can prove to you that this is not black. Right. And this is why. Yeah. And he would show you why, and then you'd be, like, you know. Yeah. No, that's crazy. Well, cool, man. Well, dude, hey, like, so... Y'all come on out Sunday, July first, two Absolutely. to eight p.m. I Lounge, you know, downtown Orlando, or I guess by the by the Orlando Eye. I'm still figuring out parts of Orlando, so I guess yeah, that yeah, would yeah. be considered kind of like <clears throat> International sorry. Drive, right? Yes. I Drive. Yeah, yes, I Drive. Yep. It's uh, I'm not really sure the exact number, but yeah. I mean, it's I Lounge. <laughs> Just I Lounge. Check it out. We'll be down there. Real hip hop, uh, real good time. Uh, you know, real chill. It's something new for the city. Um, come out and support. All kinds of cool stuff going on. And uh, yeah, you can you can check out Freefall, DJFreefall.com on Twitter, Freefall, Instagram, DJ Freefall, Facebook, DJ Freefall. Uh, so if you want to check them out on any of the social media or website, check them out there. And uh, and come on out and support. It's gonna be a dope ass time. Appreciate. It. Yep. All right, y'all. Love for those of we are out of here. Peace. <laughs> The Life of Loso podcast is brought to you by Stay Tuned Studios, SDS Podcast, The Taylor Shop Inc., CO3 Productions, The Beat Brigade, Rhyme Designs Clothing, Ron's World Guitars, The Music Experience, Custom Shirts and More, Local Goods Market, The Art of Kyle Willis, The Josh Saman MMA Foundation, and of course, Jack's Nutrition. Thank you for tuning in, checking us out. Me and Free Fall are extremely excited to invite all of you in Orlando to the Eye Lounge on July 1st from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. for some real hip hop chill. So come check it out and support y'all. Talk to you soon. Peace.